When you're building electronic projects, one of the first things that you need to think about is how you're going to get power to your breadboard. And these days I use my lab power supply right here which can vary voltage and current supplied. But when I first started out I didn't have that and I put together this little power supply for a dollar out of a transformer that I found at the local thrift store. So I'm going to show you step by step how to make one of these of your own. And I still use this all the time actually so it comes in really handy. <laughs> So I dug through the bucket of these at the local thrift store and found one with 5 volt DC output and 0.75 amp capacity which should be perfect for my breadboard projects. I'm going to take the coaxial end and trim it off and uh, that'll give me a place to attach my leads. So this uses coaxial wire which means that the negative terminal uh, has strands around the outside which I just stripped the insulation off and the positive is inside another layer of insulation which I'm stripping about a quarter inch off here. And then I'm going to trim the strands, I stripped it about an inch back and I'm going to trim those down to about a quarter inch and what this will do is stagger my connection so that I'm very unlikely to have a short circuit even if the insulation were to fail between uh, them. So I'm going to test my assumption and make sure that the center is indeed uh, positive with my multimeter and it looks like it is. So I took a couple of these jumper leads which you've got to have these around if you're doing breadboard projects and I, I just cut them off and stripped the ends. I made them equal length so that when I hook them up on those staggered connections the end terminals will be staggered as well so you won't be likely to have a short circuit when you're using it. I'm soldering it here with some rosin core solder and I'm heating the wire and then using the wire to melt the solder which uh, works pretty well to get a nice secure connection just twisted together there. I've got my helping hands holding the part in place that comes in really handy for these kind of soldering projects. So a little bit of heat shrink over the inside which is uh, again another necessity for your, your tool kit and you can pick up a bunch of that pretty cheap. Uh, and this will insulate between that positive and negative terminal and then I'll put another piece of heat shrink over the outer uh, terminal that will hold everything together. It will insulate the negative terminal. Once that's shrunk down this thing should be pretty well good to go. You can use it to run your breadboards, to run your electronic projects and you can see how those ends are staggered so they won't short circuit when it's not in use. Hey, thanks for tuning in today. If you liked this and want to see more projects and tips and tricks for your own workshop, please subscribe to my channel.